Hello friends. Today, we have an exciting adventure ahead as we explore the magnificent Timpanogos Cave. Our journey includes a 2.4-kilometer trek and a fascinating cave tour, taking us through not one, but three captivating caves. So, let's lace up our shoes and begin this thrilling exploration. Timpanogos Cave is a popular cave system located in the Wasatch Mountains of Utah, United States. It is part of the Timpanogos Cave National Monument, which is managed by the National Park Service. The cave tour fee is $12 per person, and it is necessary to make a reservation in advance to secure your slot. The cave system consists of three main caverns. Henson Cave, Middle Cave, and Timpanogos Cave. During the hike to the cave, it is essential to pay close attention to the signboards along the trail, as there is a potential risk of rockfall at any time. Your safety is of utmost importance, and being aware of the potential hazards is crucial. The mountains in the Timpanogos Cave area, like the Wasatch Mountains, were formed through the collision of tectonic plates over millions of years. This geological process, known as orogeny, involved the compression and uplift of the Earth's crust, leading to the creation of these majestic mountain ranges. As you hike up the Timpanogos Cave Trail, you'll have the incredible opportunity to witness various rock layers that were formed during different periods in Earth's history. These rock layers are a testament to the changes in geological events that have shaped the landscape over millions of years. While doing the hiking we can observe cracks in the mountain. Cracks, also known as fractures or faults, are common geological features found in mountains and other rock formations. These cracks occur due to various geological processes and can have different origins and characteristics. The major reason for the cracks are tectonic forces, erosion, freeze-thaw cycle, earthquakes, volcanic activity. When you begin the hike, a ranger will provide important instructions on how to respond to various sounds or whistles. Additionally, it is vital to respect the wildlife you may encounter on the trail. The ranger will also inform you about how to responsibly interact with any wildlife you come across, ensuring both your safety and the well-being of the animals. Timpanogos Cave National Monument is typically open to the public from late spring through early fall. The high elevation and snowy conditions in winter make the caves inaccessible and potentially hazardous during those months. Since the early 1900s, the Timpanogos cave system has been a favorite place for people to visit. As a result, the caves have been equipped with electricity and made accessible for guided tours. Most caves exist in quiet darkness and obscurity, and seldom, if ever, have visitors. Entrances are often hidden or are non-existent. In these dark caves, airflow is an indicator used by explorers to find passages beyond. Now we have reached the photo point. When visitors first hiked the cave trail in 1922, this view overlooked farmland. Through the years, the valley has seen many changes, but the trail and the caves have stayed much the same. Early residents should be thanked for their foresight in leading efforts to protect Timpanogos Cave National Monument. For almost 100 years, visitors have stopped here to take photographs. We are currently facing the entrance to the cave, and in order to begin the cave tour, we'll need to hike up to that elevated point. We can see patches of snow still lingering in certain areas of the mountains. These remnants are the last traces of the previous winter season. I plan to create my snow experience video later on, which captures the beauty and charm of snowy landscapes. Once the video is ready, I'll include the relevant links in the description for you. The whole trail from the visitor center leading to the cave entrance offers a scenic path through the natural beauty of the surrounding landscape allowing us to appreciate the lush vegetation and perhaps even catch the calls of exotic birds and other wildlife. We have reached the final stretch of the hike now to the entrance of the cave. We have reached the final stretch of the hike now to the entrance of the cave. Desert limestone is a product of living organisms from more than 340 million years ago. 
formed in a warm, tropical sea. This rock layer consists of the accumulated skeletons of countless organisms compressed and cemented into solid rock. Shells and skeletons of corals, sponges, crinoids, mollusks, and many other animals contributed enough calcium carbonate to form a 500-foot thick layer of limestone. Some of the animal's shapes were preserved as distinct visible fossils within the giant fossil that is the rock itself. The Timpanogos Cave entrance marks the starting point of our expedition into the captivating underground world of Timpanogos Cave National Monument. This gateway leads us to the wonders hidden beneath the surface, where stunning formations and geological marvels await our exploration. Let's step inside and embark on an unforgettable journey through the subterranean realm of Timpanogos Cave. The first cave we are going to enter is the Hansen Cave. According to popular legend, Martin Hansen was cutting timber high on the slope in 1887, when he came across mountain lion tracks. Following the tracks to this high ledge, he found an opening in the rock the entrance to a small cave that would later be named for him. Make sure the bear is done. Tell us if it's safe, okay? I know you're okay? You heard me do that earlier. All right. Is it safe? It is. All right. Everybody follow Lila and Will. Okay. 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 Pardon me, Ranger coming through. All right. So my name is Ranger Audrey. Um, this is my first year here at Timpanogos, but it's not my first year as a park ranger. There's nothing I love more in the entire world than giving tours at parks to kids. Um, and this is the most boring room in the entire cave, so I don't want to spend any more time in here than we have to. You guys ready to see like the slightly more interesting parts? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, as I'm unlocking the door, go ahead and look behind, behind us. Um, that big gap there is the natural entrance to our first cave, Hanson Cave. Middle Cave. They're super creative namers. Um, and here in Middle Cave, what? I'm gonna like, what's that over there on the ground? Water. Water! So this cave is full of water. I mean, not so full, right? Like we can walk and we can breathe in it. But water is what makes caves. It goes aggressive water, which is basically just like soda. Um, comes in through the cracks in the rock and it eats away at the rock um, and it makes these big holes that we call caves. And then, because it ate away at the rock, it took a little bit of the rock that used to be here, mixes it in with the water. Tiny, tiny little bits. And as the water flows or drips down, it leaves those little bits behind. And that's what makes these cool things. These stalactites and these stalagmites. And when we put a when we put a stalactite, which hangs tight from the ceiling, and a stalagmite, which you might trip over, if they get together, what do we call them? Column. A column. <laughs> ah! Get a cave joke. <laughs> Super funny, right? Yeah, it's not that great. <laughs> was there an opening from the other cave to this one? There was not. So. This cave and Hanson Cave did form on the same fault line, um, and so there's a chance that there is some connection, but that connection would mostly just be hydraulic. 
Um, all of these tunnels were built in the 30s because the caves were really close together and we wanted to explore all of them. <laughs> I have a question back here. Will has a question. All right, what's up? How did the water get in here? Hmm. How is there land right here but there's water there? What do you think? How does water get, how does water like fill up the lake? Oh, look at that rain. It rains. It rains. So rain came down through the cracks in the water and it just hung out here. There are other places where the rain gets down in the cracks, but it, it's able to go into other little holes or keep going through the rock. But this rock is hard enough that the water can't all get through it. But it does, just kind of slowly. By the end of the summer, this lake will be gone. The groove there in the wall, that's where, back when this was underwater, cold water, a hot spring, like boil you alive hot, hot spring, um, pump water up in, it mixed with the cold water and carved these channels And then they come together and that's what makes this really cool build. Wow. A bunch of those little trails coming together and carving out with a fiddle Which I think is just the coolest. How long does it take for these formations? How long does it take these to form? So it depends on the formation. Um, the cave is about a million years old, and it's been about 500,000 years since it wasn't underwater. Um, so probably, so somewhere between there is when a lot of these formations would have started forming. Um, we have a few formations that we've measured over time. Um, there's one that's pretty wet, drips pretty constantly, um, a stalactite and a stalagmite pair that over a 52 year, year period only grew three eighths of an inch. Yeah. Um, but then there are other formations that almost never drip, and so they're almost never growing. Yeah. Um, so this one, this cave was found by the grandson and uh, son of the guy who found the first cave. First cave. Yeah. This Hansen cave found by Martin Hansen. So two other Hansons found um, this cave. They found a hole in the wall, decided to go down. Didn't bring enough rope, shimmied down the rest of the way. They were, no, they were a daring breed, those Hansons. <laughs> can't really see it because it's zigzagged a little bit. But that way is not the entrance. Rope. Big, big room. It's a big room. <laughs> it's a cool room. I don't know, I think it's mostly just a main just sort of look at it. Uh, that is flow stone. All right, so we've got a flow stone. Water flows down and left some stone. All right, so that's our main. It's really brown and muddy. Who do you guys think makes that brown and muddy color? Mud and rain, yeah. So the rain comes down, it picks up a little bit of mud, and we're close enough to the surface here that the rocks don't filter out all that mud. So, it can look pretty brown. But in reality, those formations are actually going to be a gorgeous white color. We'll see that a little bit later on. You do see some natural limestone. This over here is a little bit more natural. See that black layer? Um, this side is a lot drier than this side, so this side has a lot less there's, there's a little bit still, you know, you see some, you know, you see some little stuff, but, yeah. So how close to the surface are we? Here? 110 feet. Does the temperature in this cave rise and drop with the seasons? It is 45 degrees year round. Okay. Sort of shelf, this shelf stone back here, sort of lining where the lake would have gone up to. But, there's not a lake there anymore. And look, these formations aren't dripping. What do you think happened to all that water? Did it evaporate? It did evaporate. But why didn't more water come in? I don't know either. It didn't. It, maybe because the cracks got filled in and it didn't it, in the rest of the cave. Because there's so many rocks, it got stuck in the water. That's a pretty good guess, actually. 
This is one of the great mysteries of the cave. Why the beautifully decorated coral garden, which obviously once had a lot of water in it, is now pretty much dry. I think this is cool. So two things that I think are really cool about this. One is that we call this kind of formation cave coral, and it's all made of, from limestone, which is dead coral. Um, and the other thing that I think is really cool is that this shows us just how much the earth changes. We think about the earth um, as this static thing, right? We think about mountains as something that are always going to be, be there and always have been. But they're not. They're constantly changing. Even our mountain is, is expanding every single day. And that's why we have so much rock fall. Because every day the mountain is just moving, it's moving a little tiny, tiny bit. And it's pushing rocks off. During the cave tour, the ranger informed us about a special experience they had planned. Deliberately, they switched off the lights to give us a unique blackout experience. As the lights went out, darkness enveloped us, immersing us in an environment where we could barely see anything. This gave us a small glimpse of what it would be like if we were exploring the cave and suddenly lost our source of light. What do you guys notice while you were walking through that last little bit about this new cave that was different from the last few? The tiny coral. Yeah, we had those little like curly finger crunchy Cheeto guys. Right. Some more of them back here. What are how are those made? Those are called helictites, and how they're made is a little bit of a mystery. Um, so we know that they're made from dripping water, the same as stalactites. Um, but something happens, some sort of blockage happens to make the water drip not so according to gravity. Probably it's some sort of capillary action, um, but we're not entirely certain. Uh, these helictites, we'll see a bunch more in the next room, are part of what makes this cave so special. Most caves have one or two of these. We have a lot. <laughs> so one of the coolest things about this room, so I mean, the, you know, the giant stalactite is like pretty cool, but I think the coolest thing so, once upon a time, rangers did not uh, know quite as much as we know now. And they used to take little rubber mallets and they would hit the stacked stalactites and they would make a giant stone. We don't do that anymore because things are great. So this room, you'll see a lot more of those crunchy Cheeto fingery helictite guys. You'll also see, you want to see some more colors? See that cool orange rust brown? What do you think makes that? Uh, iron. Iron. It's iron oxide. It's literally rust mixed in with the rock. Oh, I yeah, we see some of this like purpley paint. Ooh. Does anyone think they know what that comes from? Yeah, you're never gonna guess. Oh, you have a guess? It does look like a worm. And you see these ones that are perfectly straight? Yeah. Those ones are, look like straws. They're called soda straws. People were a lot more creative in their naming when they got to this cave. <laughs> um, that purple comes from manganese. There's some more of it over here. That's there. That, select, that like really purple stalactite looks seriously infected and it grosses me out. Mm. But it's a good example of the color. <laughs> Yeah, there's like a hump with the camel. That's a good guess. 
Because there's a camel. Uh, there's a bed. Here's the pumps. Yeah, and it's missing a leg. Where might its leg be? Oh, I know. It's over there. <laughs> <laughs> when it came to this cave. Um, back in the day, you know, 100 years ago, when we started doing tours here, the people who were leading the tours weren't super knowledgeable about the And honestly, neither was anyone. Um, we've learned a lot more about <laughs> caves in the last 100 years. So back then, and it still happens today in a lot of private owned caves, they filled their tours, not with geology, not with history, but with something we call fairy land. Basically, they pointed at rocks and they said, this looks like that. And that was the whole tour. So they would tell you the grand and dramatic tale of how the camel lost its leg to the alligator. Oh, yeah. And they would point out the unicorn. Mm -hmm. I point out that poor dog. <laughs> Bear's butt. <laughs> <laughs> Don't really work. Um, and where After the cave tour, we began our ascent towards the visitor center. The surroundings were both beautiful and a bit eerie, but we were grateful for the convenience of the paved trail. As we hiked down, we enjoyed the picturesque view of the valley in front. Along the way, we had the pleasure of spotting various birds and playful squirrels. I hope you enjoyed watching the video of our adventure. If you liked it, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel for more exciting content like this. Don't forget to share it with your friends, and feel free to leave your comments below. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.